Welcome, welcome very much to Conversations. It's a deep personal honor and privilege and uh, joy to be able to welcome to the program Gerd Stern. And Gerd Stern is a fixture in terms of American society. He's had uh, association with some of the great intellectual artists and poets of our time. He's got a particularly close personal association with the Woodstock Festival that I'll just say before we get right into the conversation, would have been 44 years to this moment that you and I are talking that the Woodstock Festival in a musical sense got started with Richie Haven singing Freedom, much to the joy of the 500,000 people that were assembled <laughs> waiting for it to happen. You had a big hand in that, but Gert, welcome so very, 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 one more time, very much to the program. Thank you. It's an well, honor to have yeah. you here. Likewise. And, uh, well, it's a great honor and interesting. So why don't you share, we're going to show a little clip of Marshall McLuhan, who was a giant that you were in association with during the program, but share just a little bit of your own background, if you would, please, because you've been associated with the intellectual leadership in a con uh, over, uh, over a, a considerable period of time. Share your own background, if you could, please. Well, um, I'm basically as a child, yes. a uh, refugee from Hitler, Germany. Well, right. And uh, I grew up in New York, mm -hmm. uh, went to public school, uh. Uh, went to the Bronx High School of Science. Not a bad school at all. And uh, in the days when it was uh, male only. Yeah. And uh, I thought I wanted to be a zoologist, uh, uh -huh. specializing in, in ichthyology because uh -huh. I was into fish, but yeah. uh, tropical fish. But yeah. it turned out that I was a poet. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, I, I, I got recognized mostly by some of the first women in uh, my life. Okay, yeah. And uh, it seemed like a a good way to get to know women, is that? No, well, no, yeah, no, it, it no. seemed like very familiar to me, um, both from my background in German language yeah. and in English, mm -hmm. and I really took to writing mm -hmm. um, very early. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we're talking about the uh, early 1940s. Wow, okay, that's going and, back, uh, yeah. Yeah, because I was born in 28, so like in 1940, I, Boy, wasn't, I was, you know. You must be doing, or do you have to share with me what you've been eating or something? <laughs> because you sure as hell look good and you sure kick, kick, kicking it out yeah, on all 12 I, cylinders. I, I don't think it's what I've been eating because I, I eat I'm a pretty, what you would call a Catholic <laughs> eater for, for a Jew, uh, and, you know, yeah. and uh, so. Was your family here with you, a refugee, or and well, was it encouraging in Bronx Science is a really good school? I well, mean, I was very lucky yeah, uh, uh -huh. to, to get into science. You, yeah. you had to pass a test. Yeah, I would think so, yeah. Days. But um, my mother actually died of illness uh, before we left Europe. Oh wow! When okay. I was uh, not even four. Yeah. And my father remarried before we left, mm -hmm. so I had a stepmother, mm -hmm. and uh, we first came to the Bronx, uh -huh. and because we had relatives, my father was one of ten children. Large family. Uh, yeah. And, uh -huh. and there were about three or four of them here yeah. and uh, eventually and we then moved to Washington Heights which is where I grew up okay, and yeah. went to PS 187. Right, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, and, uh, but after that when I was in my late teens I moved to Greenwich Village. It sounded like a place to go for a poet. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, you know, I bet. And yeah. in, in those days <coughs> <coughs> it was a very open uh -huh. scene. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you, that would have been you. Were, so that's a forty. You were born what year now? Twenty eight. Twenty eight. So when it was about forty five, forty six, forty seven, something like that. Uh, even a little earlier than that. A little uh, earlier I than was, that. You would start hanging out down there. Or something. I, I actually r rented a room there because I, I my 
parents had, I have a stepsister and yeah. a stepbrother, uh -huh. and so it was, uh, the apartment was too small, it was time for me to leave, uh -huh. and also my, my father was kind of a um, tyrannical type. Oh, oh, I see, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, it wasn't consonant with what I thought I might want to live a life. Right. And um, I just kind of... Uh, gravitated. Uh, gravitated. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the village was uh, a, a very interesting place that time you, to, yeah. to rebel in. Yeah, right, absolutely. Yeah. That was known for that, yeah. And You met a couple of poets or so? And well, n not until I... I uh, yeah, I, I, I met some poets, and, uh, and, I, and I, I was recognized as a poet very early on in the village. Uh -huh. I Good. worked... Uh, in, a, in, a, in the Jabberwocky shop. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, Greenwich Avenue, right next to the Four Seasons Bookshop, which okay. was kind of the center of poetry was it really and literature. Uh -huh. Well, it, it was the place where the people who were involved with the Partisan Review yes. hung uh -huh. out, so uh, I met a lot of those people. Mm -hmm. And uh, Isaac Rosenfeld, who was a very interesting writer, mm. kind of uh, mentored me. He got me a scholarship to Black Mountain, which didn't wor work out very well. But It didn't work out well at Black Mountain? No, it, it, uh, th the woman I went to study with, M.C. Richards, uh, and her husband who at the time, who was the dean, mm. Uh, had a falling out with some of the other people there and, and were leaving, mm -hmm. and that's who I wanted to study with. She was a, a poet and a potter. Yeah, huh? Uh -huh. Uh, and the people who took over Black Mountain was uh, the Albers, ha uh, Hans yeah. Albers, the painter, okay. and his yeah. wife Annie, who was a weaver. and. Bucky, um, Bucky Fuller hung out there. For no, a while. Bucky Fuller didn't come there till much no, uh, later. No, yeah, later. Yeah, but I was saying it, was a, it was a place for artists and absolutely. intellectuals. Absolutely a major uh, thing, yeah. I met a lot of people there who, Paul Williams and his wife, who mm -hmm. later I spent a lot of time with uh, in Rockland County mm -hmm. because he, he came from uh, some wealth and eventually he actually wound up buying Black Mountain, and then when it fell apart, selling it to a Baptist seminary. Mm, mm. But uh, he started a uh, communal uh, uh, place in Rockland County, which was known as The Land, uh -huh. where John Cage and, Cage and, Merce yeah, and, yeah, and David yeah. Tudor and yeah. MC and yeah. Karen Carnes and David Weiner. Yeah. Sherry yeah. Dean's home. What company to be in, huh? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a yeah. lot later. That was yeah. after San Francisco and, yeah. and Sausalito, where, yeah. where I went in the late uh, 40s. In the late 40s, 40s okay, yes, yeah. I first that was also a happening place, yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. San Francisco and, and uh, Big Sur. Yeah, beautiful, uh, yeah. Uh, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and again, I met poets yeah. in San Francisco. The first night I was in San Francisco, there was a reading at the old uh, San Francisco Museum of Art, mm -hmm. which at that time was in the uh, Civic Center. This uh, brother Antoninus, except that that was before he was that, he was Bill. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Philip Lamantia, yeah. uh, Robert Duncan, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I felt uh, like part of it uh, immediately. Hey, that you'd gone there, uh, what year or so would you have gone there, and that was destined to be the site of, a, you know, of a Mario Savio and the free speech, oh, and the, 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 later. the movement of love and yeah. all that kind oh, of stuff. Oh, yeah, but that was... That was all Some later. Of, that was later, but you were yeah. somewhat involved with that and with the people who were destined to build this period up to uh, Absolutely. the Woodstock Festival. That, uh, you were at the heart of it all, it seems to me. True. Mm. I mean, Summer of Love, I, I, I was there again, but um, in the 40s, 
Uh, yeah, it was right. a very, very different place yeah. than in the 60s. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, in 1947, uh, I was back in New York, mm -hmm. and I was uh, at the Psychiatric Institute oh, really, at yeah. the time that Carl Solomon and Allen Ginsberg wound up there. Okay. So that's where I met oh, them. Uh, right then, right. That's where you met, right? We, we Meet your friends at the institute, we right? Were, we were three patients. Yeah, right, 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 right. We right. weren't very patient, but what do you? <laughs> not very patient, patient, yeah, right? Yeah. When did when did he write Howell? Can you oh, uh, quite a bit later. Yeah. I mean, uh, in, in San Francisco, and I was at that first reading at the Sixth Gallery yeah, where, you where, were? where yeah. Alan read Howell. Yes. I didn't go to hear Alan. I, I mean, I knew Alan. Yeah. But I I went because Philip Lamantia was reading. Okay. A whole yes. bunch and Kenneth Rexroth. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, but Alan, that, that was quite an experience, hearing how for the first time. Um, it was a little devastating to me because. Uh, the kind of the main character in that poem that he says what turned out to be pejorative things about was Carl Solomon, our mutual friend. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And he says that Carl Solomon had sex with his mother, although he, d he uses a, a, a four-letter word. Uh -huh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, that was not true. Oh. Uh, it may actually have been something mich mischievous that Carl had said. Yeah, maybe. But yeah. Alan knew it wasn't true, uh -huh. and it caused tremendous uh, bad vibes in mm. the family. I uh. knew I knew Carl's mother, uh -huh. and his uncle mm -hmm. uh, was the head of Ace Books. Wow, okay. And uh, that was, I don't know if you remember. I they don't, no. They were like pocketbooks, yeah. but they were two-sided. In other words, they had two books back Oh, I do back. kind of. Okay. I do kind of, yeah, well, right, I, yeah. I was, he yeah. Worked, Carl worked for his uncle, and I was his West Coast agent, and um, the only book that he accepted from a lot of books that, Alan had given me manuscripts of yeah. was uh, Bill Burroughs' Junkie, yeah. which, Junkie was, yeah. which was one of those back-to-back uh, -back books. I see, yeah, right. But when when Hal came out, which was about that same time, yeah. uh, his uncle fired Carl, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and his mother was devastated. Um, you know, uh, and Carl wound up back in the hospital. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So uh, I was um, pretty unhappy uh. about Alan. So you were back and forth between the West Coast and Greenwich Village, more or less. Yes, or were absolutely. Were, well, those are two good places to be in that time frame. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and you know, I, I had reasons to come back to the East because my p father. And my stepmother and my family and my were, were there, and all my old friends. Uh -huh. I had been up at New Paltz, uh, Really? Yes, yeah. on Long Meadow Road. Uh, well, you mean you were living there, or you I, had a place? I, I, I lived there with my first wife. Uh, what year would that have been, or um, roughly? I mean, the end of the forties. Wow. The very be the, the, the beginning of the 50s. Goes back to 1639, that town. Yes. There were little stone Huguenots. houses. Huguenots. Yeah, the Huguenots were yeah. up there. Well, that's, that's why, early. That actually, that's why we went there, because hmm. uh, m the mother of a friend of mine lived <laughs> in an old stone yeah. house. They're still there, yeah. And, some. and she needed somebody to help fix it up, yeah. and I was the guy, because I had been doing some um, kind of handyman carpentry yeah. in New York for her son. You really could do that? And so you I know how, or you just sort of pitch well, in? Or 
I'll tell you. I was terrible at that. Every time uh, I change the light bulb, all the bulb, bulbs go out in the house. You know? <laughs> well, <laughs> my first wife's mother was living with a Norwegian carpenter, an old carpenter, and I helped him work on her house, and he taught me a lot. Okay. Enough so that I wasn't very good, but <laughs> I knew how to use the tools, you know. <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah. I, could, I could build shelves. Yeah. <laughs> when it came to hanging doors, I, I was a total failure. Oh, but, yeah, that's um, funny. Yeah, yeah, that's really funny. That's a sweet little town. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's still there. It was just yeah. up the last weekend. It but I, uh, I wasn't in town. I was under the mountains. Oh, the yeah. Mountains. Uh, uh, Schwangunk, yeah. Uh, you know, under Mohonk. Mohonk, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, it was beautiful country. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was now, a big farm. And then, listen, we, uh, the trouble, you know, one of the tyrannies of life is that there's not enough time to get everything in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and so what we want to do is we want to sort of talk, because you had a big hand, and it's just jumping and everything like that, and it's all interesting. But um, you had a big, you had a, as it happened, uh, we were just mentioned at the outset of this program that it's the 44th anniversary. Yes. If it was 44 years ago and you were at Max Yasker's farm, you'd be here, Richard, having singing Freedom. You remember the Absolutely. kick? Absolutely. No. And you had a hand in that. I, and you uh, knew all the people. We have a clip of Mr. McLuhan. You knew John Calkin. You knew all of these people. You had such a, a, a wide-ranging uh acquaintanceship and friendship with the intellectual leadership of the uh, of the intellectual class and po poetic class that but Woodstock how well, did you come to know about okay. the Woodstock festival well, or get involved in it, instigating it, that it, it's a little previous story yeah because okay. we we had a communal group living in Rockland County in okay. Garnerville New York okay. we, we still own the, the old church building that we were in at that time yeah and we were called USCO, USCO, we got you the down company of us. Yeah. And during that time, we did multimedia shows. We do, yeah. All right. over the country, yeah. in universities, museums, and part of that is that we made psychedelic posters. We were part of the p psychedelic art world. Right, okay, yeah. And right. one of the people... And light shows. You and know. light shows. Yeah, right. All over. Yeah. We are all yeah. one, huh, yeah. Bob? Anyway, one of the people that we sold these posters to yeah. in Miami, uh -huh. because he was going to university there, although he was from New York uh -huh. also, was Michael Lang. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the Michael Lang. And, and, yeah. and Michael um, had finished that, and he was in New York, and he got together with some other dudes yeah. and cooked up the idea of the Woodstock Festival. Right, right, right. right. So by this time, we were in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Okay. We had... Intermedia Systems Corporation, okay. and we were making multimedia, we were making film, right. we were doing uh, performance art, yeah. and Michael found out from, he was already now going to live in Woodstock, yeah. uh, that we were up there, and he called me, and he told me about this festival that they were cooking up. Mm -hmm. And w w he needed somebody to kind of um, be in charge <laughs> of the logistics and uh, sp building the stage <laughs> and um, making sure that the grounds were pr appropriate. And so he Somebody said, has to do it. Yeah. Would, would, would you guys be interested? <laughs> right. I said, sure, we'd yeah. be interested. And that was like a couple months before the actual event. We had the date set, did it, everything? And that yeah. And, and, and they and, didn't and, sure and of the location? Or well, what? the location, originally, he wanted to do it just outside of Woodstock, Woodstock yeah, on right. the way to so Saugerties. Yeah. Didn't work out. Yeah. And then he got a location which we... Uh, I, uh, we, we had an architect and yeah. we had people, surveyors, mm. and we had all these people, uh, and we prepared this first location, mm. and we built fences, and we the stage was nearly finished. Ten days beforehand, the town 
rebelled. Re they, 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 they took our permits away. Wow. So we, we were kind of lost. And fortunately, Michael and his cohorts uh, came upon my experience. No, the, no the, oh. yeah, the, 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 there was publicity that yeah, we right. really had been banned. Yeah, right. And Max Yasker yeah. volunteered. Yeah. They didn't find it. God bless him. Yeah, yeah. He, he volunteered his, his farm. Got a little field over here. They you might wonder, come and take a look. Yeah? He said, you guys, he felt <laughs> sorry. He felt sorry. Right, for, right. Because the yeah. announcement already had been about yeah, right. the, the bands that were sure. coming in. Sure, and there were every band in the And, and that was Monterey Pop had gone on before that, right? Well, and the pop, but Monterey Jazz, of jazz, course, was yes, first. I mean, yeah, no, and pop, yeah, too, but, right. but jazz was first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to go to Monterey Jazz, yeah, yeah. but because um, I knew a lot of the jazz musicians. Yeah, well, I don't know who you didn't know. It seems to me you knew everybody, well, but never mind. Yeah, yeah, there were a couple of people you missed, but... Uh, yeah, there yeah. were, and there still yeah. are. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, but you're not one of the people I missed. No, we haven't, thank goodness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but in any event, we'll get it. Yeah, so Michael Lang persuaded us, and, and we needed the work. Yeah. It was it was a supposedly a very good job. Yeah. We didn't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> for a couple of the years until the film came out. When the film okay, came out, yeah. they got some money yeah. because the whole play, yeah. the whole thing was was, right on, was a money yeah. sucker. Yeah, you know? right, right, and, right. Uh, and the, the move, the move was very expensive. Yeah, from the one. Oh, location. from the site you already oh, had set up. We yeah, had to take the goddamn. Yeah, right. The big stages, stage, huge stuff. stage. Yeah, right. And you know, lights. Put up all those fences to oh. to have all those ticket carriers that came yeah, out. And then, and they were destined to come down. And yeah. we, we we had no idea <laughs> of how many people would come. Yeah, yeah. It was a, a very very small number compared to what happened. Yeah, and. Of course, practically nobody paid, mm, I know except the people who bought tickets in advance, <laughs> yes. which was <laughs> very few. It was a happening. But we, yeah. you know, we had a lot of people mm. working there, and we hired because we we all knew each other. Mm -hmm. Now Abby Hoffman, Abby Hoffman, yeah, I love him. Yeah, and he said, you know, he they had the what, what was his group called? Uh, the, the Fugs? No, no, no. That's Ed Sanders. Yippee. The yippies. Yeah, they, he wanted to do the security, <laughs> and and he he he, he I said, yeah. No, yeah. No, Abby yeah. and he came yeah. with Jerry, yeah. and Ruben. Yeah. Yep, and yeah. Um, yeah. I said no, <laughs> because we had hired the hog farm and. The hog farm to do security. And, and wavy gravy. And wavy gravy for food? They, did no, you, did the wavy food? gravy no, was... No, for the police? No, wavy gravy was the head of the hog farm at that yeah, time. Yeah, I know, but were they, were they there they, to they keep They were the security. They yes. the security. And, <laughs> they would, and, and they provided... Uh, food, food for food. people who yeah. didn't have any. The granola just manifest, they, yeah. They were, they were incredibly good. Yeah. And Abby was furious. Mm. He, he said... Oh, we're going to trash you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, go, go ahead, yeah. trash us. Yeah. You know, mm. I mean, I knew I'd be so... Yeah, it right. Wasn't there like, was just, yeah. It wasn't like we were unfriendly. No. But, um, you know, he was destined to be off the stage by Peter Townsend, right? That's for true. bringing up Vietnam, which is all right in my view. But anyway, that's... Yeah, the well, story. well yeah. there was a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of egos bouncing around. Oh, there sure thing, were. You know, artists can be really sort of a pain in the neck in some people's And uh, the people yeah. who were providing the mo money were also... Yeah, they're you know, breathing down your neck all uh, the time, you know, right? And, uh, and, you know, where were people going to... Sit. And, and l we And sleep. Uh, and our, our English architect built us a dome <laughs> out of hula hoops, which he taped together with gaffer's tape and threw over the whole 30 or so foot dome. Uh, over the stage? Over the stage? No, no, no. no. This is oh, all, for, um, uh, for where, where accommodation. We, where we were sleeping. Oh, I see. Yeah. The, oh, the, the gang. The, 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 four, the 40 yeah. people that we had working. Yeah. And he threw a, a, t a plastic tarp over <laughs> the hula hoops. It was a great <laughs> little dome, except yeah, it leaked. when it yeah. started raining. It didn't work so well. I was sleeping 
uh, right under the middle of it. And <laughs> when I woke up in the morning, I saw the light. You know, I thought I thought the, I thought I was on some huge trip. Yeah. But what had happened is that the the hula hoop in the center of yeah. the top, the tarp had given away, <laughs> and there was this huge. Funnel, just a funnel, a of funnel. Water. Oh, yes, right. And and the <laughs> and the sun was coming yeah. through it yeah. and focusing <laughs> on my face. You know? So I quickly boy, that's, got out a, of the way. that's a painting. It that's was, a it painting. Was a wonderful, yeah, thing, right. Feeling, but yeah, yeah. it's also potentially dangerous. Yes, indeed. Yes, anyway, indeed. yeah, it was a, a, a fun, f fun few days. Yeah, yeah. We had lots of things that we had to take care of, mm. which we hadn't anticipated. Yeah, I bet. Fortunately, we had enough p uh, putties yeah, uh, yeah that yeah. wasn't the problem oh uh, it was an epiphany it was an epiphany and, uh, mr rockefeller declared a disaster <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> and all the roads were rocked and everything yeah, like that and they the came by the multi oh yeah the the, the 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 traffic and the and the cars that broke down and the police action yeah was was very difficult mm. Uh, the police were very good, by the way, yeah. in various ways. Yeah. When when people needed to be lifted, yeah. the helicopters came. Right. You know, right. The, the order was maintained. Just a quick sidebar. How do you think? What do you think of the film Woodstock? Uh, I mean, it's since when was there? One recognized the some, event. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, the filmmakers were good they yeah. knew what they were doing yeah, they right. had the right equipment yeah. and thank god the film w did very well financially yeah which means that eventually somebody we, got we, something we got paid you got paid <laughs> amazing. You know, amazing got paid <laughs> yes yeah. because uh, yeah. losing that amount of money uh, we had a p small public company called Intermedia Systems Corporation. Yeah. We were about to go out of business. Right, because yeah. of that, right. Yeah. You never have been too terribly focused on making money, I don't think. I'm, uh, you, it's no. not your try you wouldn't make a very good accountant or banker, I don't think. Or, 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 or anything or any kind of, with any know, kind of money maker. Uh, yeah. No, I, and you You're know, a I, came, intellectual, I yeah. came from a money making family. Oh, okay. You know, well. not, not a rich family. Yeah. But but a businessman yeah. family, my Reasonable father, people, yeah. My uh, uh, <laughs> later on, I spent nearly ten years helping my father and my stepbrother yeah. in the cheese business, uh, which cheese. was an import yeah, business. Yeah. And um, the first thing my father told me when I decided he needed help and yeah. I, he yeah. need he wanted yeah. me yeah. is he said to me, Garrett, yeah. we're not in business to sell cheese. This was after a couple of weeks. What were you in we're business? in business to make money. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, it uh, hadn't occurred. Yeah, no, it hadn't <laughs> right. occurred. Yeah, because I love cheese. Yeah, right. You know, yeah, I understand. He, he, he wasn't really yeah. that much in love with cheese. <laughs> cheese was the way to make money. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's and the, he, did that's, he did pretty well. Yeah, that's a lot of that's the thinking of a lot of people and everything. Yeah, um, but you knew all kinds of people. You knew Marshall McLuhan. Well, yes. I, and we're going to show uh, a little clip of him. We got a clip of you talking no, with him. But I, go ahead. I knew Marshall McLuhan because I was living up in Rockland County. Yeah. Near the land where John Cage and MC, and John had. We called him Uncle John. Oh, did you really? He, yeah, oh, he my he God. had a manuscript uh. which was a report to the National Association of Educational Broadcasters okay. which Marshall had read uh -huh. written and he lent it to my friend MC Richards uh -huh. and MC asked him to lend it to me because she thought that it was something that I would really appreciate. Right, right. I had w worked with MC I'd gotten her the manuscript of Antonin Artaud's Oh. Theater and its double. Uh, theater the absurd. Is that the no, theater of and its double. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and she translated it and so forth and so on. But that manuscript was a total inspiration and uh, opening for me uh -huh. out of 
written poetry yeah, uh-huh. into visual art. Yeah, right, right. And then that's the, when I started doing. You do the vi- and were you doing the light? You did a light show. It's an yeah, art. Yeah, but it was uh, that was afterwards. After, yeah, after yeah, I yeah, read yeah. that manuscript. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That right. the first light, the light show we did, or it was really more than a light show. Yeah. It was a multimedia show in San Francisco. Okay. Uh, this was like the third time I went back. Okay. Yeah. At the San Francisco <laughs> Museum, it was called. Who are you and what's happening? Okay. Now, here we are. We're yeah. doing two evenings, and it's a, a madhouse. Yeah, right. And I, I won't tell you all about it, but the part about it is that ten days later, yeah. I got a phone call from a guy from Vancouver uh-huh. who said, I was in San Francisco, and I saw your show. I'm at UBC, which is the University of British Columbia. Right. And I noticed you had a quote from McLuhan uh-huh. in that show. Now you hadn't been, a, you were aware, not or were, were, no. no. Well, what was your association with McLuhan, well, either I, distantly or close? No, no, no at right. that time? I had read that manuscript. Okay, yeah, And yeah. I loved what he said. You hadn't met him. No. Oh, okay. okay. And this guy yeah. calls me. Yeah. And he says, M- McLuhan is coming to lecture uh-huh. at UBC uh-huh. in two weeks. Uh-huh. How would you like to come up and Meet him, yeah. Uh, no, and yeah. and do a show uh-huh. like the one you did in San Francisco. Oh wow! Okay. He, they said to, it, it to, to go along with the talk with, with his lecture. What a good idea! And were so, you able to manage that? So Short we got in our yeah. Volkswagen bug. Well, 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 we piled we piled yeah. uh, our slides and yeah. our various things. God, I'd like to have a movie of you packing. And, yeah. and and off we went. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was two weeks later. Did you sing all the way up to British Columbia, Valerie, yeah. Valderai, or something? Yeah. Or well, we we're went off on the adventures. We, we we stopped in uh, Seattle. Yeah, and we stayed with some people who had been interested in some of the work that we did. Kesey or no, 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 no. I, I knew Ken. Yeah, yeah. But he was in Oregon, not in yeah. not in Washington. So in Seattle. The guy who owned the Space Needle yeah. was uh, an art collector, yeah. and um, you know, it's we stayed in his house, mm. and he s- he had a pool, yeah. ah. and he said to me, when I came out of the pool, that's the pool that your friend, the poet Theodore Rethke. Ah died in. Oh, my Lord. And that was really a kind yeah. of frightening, because yeah. Ted yeah. Rutke was a was poet that I admired and really? that, that I knew from. I had escorted him when he came to San Francisco to read at the San Francisco. Oh, I see. I, see, I picked yeah. him up at the airport. Yeah, and poignant. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. okay, but then we went to Vancouver, and there we met Marshall McLuhan. Okay, how was the meeting? You the remember? meeting was fantastic. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we did our show, he lectured, and he said in the lecture, he said, I kind of understand <laughs> what these people think that what I wrote has something to do with what they're doing. What they don't understand and what you won't understand is that I'm really a Victorian. A Victor- yeah, right. I like, literary, yeah. I like yeah. the kind of toaster that you have to open up. I don't like pop-up toasters. <laughs> yes. And you have to put the t- t- size in and put them in. And you probing. It, He's yeah. probing. He had probes. So, so yeah. but, but he yeah. said, I do understand <laughs> that this has something to do. And my book, which is from that report, yeah. is called Understanding Media. Oh, so that I understanding do understand media. media. Yeah, he, had done, he had done Gutenberg Galaxy. Right? Oh, yes. Yeah. That was a, uh, had, you, had you caught no, it? No, I had yeah, not. No. Did not you get to it? Yes. I thought it was a total oh. force. Oh, it's a total force. Absolutely James force. Joyce kind of stuff, you know. Well, the, Joyce was... Uh, was uh, a giant? And Gombrich and, mm. uh, I mean... Uh, McLuhan yeah. was probably one of the best read people in in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, He's and, brilliant. Yeah, and and Wyndham he was Lewis. A, yeah, you know all those people. Wyndham Lewis. Yeah, yeah, were, right. Uh, Gombridge. Yeah. Uh, he he was into all of that, and he turned me on to yeah. it. 
And you, you know, became friends. We became we friends. Friend, you I became used to, friends with uh, McLuhan. We, we, I don't we, know how many friends he had. We, I don't know, because a lot uh, of people were confounded by you. Yes. We, yeah. we did another gig later on in mm. Rochester. Good. I used to go up to visit him in uh, Toronto. Uh -huh. And the, the thing that we're going to look at yeah. is something that when I visited yeah. in Toronto, uh -huh. I had my first porta pack Yeah, you had white. a porta pack I remember the them. Yeah. Right. Uh, I was one of the, the, I was on Canal Street the first day the P Sony porta pack wound up in New York. No kidding, I really. I was waiting on the street yeah. along with Nam June Paik, yeah. and we each bought one. Oh, I thought, you, I thought you both got one. Yes. You both got, at the same time, same, you bought Sa it together. Absolutely. Gosh sakes, that's we really, the, that would have been one of the very each. first that came. Well, that's very interesting because the myth is, the publicity is that Sony had given the Nam June one. Yeah, and maybe they first. did. Maybe they the did later. Got to him, I but think. the yeah. first one he bought, I remember we we each had cash, uh -huh. and it was his, uh, I think nice. it was C. T. Louis' father. C. T. Louis, I love C. Yeah. T. Louis. He's still got that place downtown. God bless him. He's got everything from the Porta Pack on up to the modern uh, era in that place. Right. Major guy. They should be doing that. But you became close with with him. I told you, I used to visit with him every spring because of Paul Ryan. Uh -huh. And you knew John Culkin. And yes. you know when Ma Marshall McLuhan was in New York and everything. And Paul Ryan was a major. In the uh, Rain Dance co Collective was really good. They yeah, were but, but, but the reason Paul and Marshall knew each other was because of Fordham University. Yeah, he had been his assistant and it, it there. Was a, it was a scandal, you yeah, know, because... A scandal? Why? I don't well, know the because scandal. Because the scandal was that about a few months into Marshall's being, having this $100,000 uh, gig, gig at, at, at Fordham. Fordham. Yeah, John it Culkin. Is, is, yes, he, yeah. he's the one who managed yeah, it. Yeah, right. And um, the legislature, the New York legislature, canceled it because they said it should not have been given to a Canadian it oh. should have been given to someone who was I an American. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. And, so and, did he, and did he live left. out the contract? No, the year? Marshall left. He left. He went home. Because yeah. Fordham didn't have the money to replace I'll it. Be, uh, that's the part I didn't know about, that, that money business again. It really gets a, in the way. It, it was a, the, there's so much that happened because Marshall had a history mm. of getting terrible headaches. Yeah. I mean, awful, yeah. awful. N not... not not, not little migraine or no, no not migraines yeah. uh, and we were at a party in yeah. new york mm -hmm. uh toward the end of his stay and uh he went into the bedroom with one of those headaches yeah. when he came out i was talking to him and this guy came up he said <laughs> professor McLuhan, here's my card mm -hmm. i'm doctor so-and-so mm -hmm. and i think I know what your headaches are about. Uh -huh. And Marshall said, oh, everybody tells yeah, everybody me they're psycho e psycho psychosomatic. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, right, right, right. And the doctor said, I don't think so. Mm. So Marshall went the next day. Mm -hmm. And not s long thereafter, the doctor operated, and he took over a half-pound benign tumor wow. off Marshall's brain. Wow. Which was present. He hadn't known that was there. Mm -hmm. No. Wow. They all told him it was psychosomatic. Yeah, yeah. Well, this, that's guy what was, this guy was brilliant. Yeah, he was absolutely yeah. brilliant. He would do probes, yeah. and I think he loved to to, to just uh, confound, you know, just be confound these people, and he'd say, "Oh, you don't like that? Well, how would you like this?" And he would come well, up with I, these probes. He and would ideas. change the subject. Yeah, and he was at very. The like a, like a Roman candle going yes. off. And, yeah. yeah, he really was. I used to visit with him because of Paul. And, uh, we went, and uh, like well, I said on Paul the telephone, is, Paul is still Paul's around. Paul's brilliant. Paul is one, one of the most wonderful yeah. video artists and philosophers yes. yeah. that exist in our time. Yeah. And he's a very modest man. Yeah, he's very modest. And he's, he's, he's not too physically well anymore. I'm sorry that does happen. But, uh, but he's, he's living right here in New York. Yeah. 
he was in Documenta recently. Yeah. And uh, his uh, ideas about three-party relationships yeah, right. Absolutely, yeah. are, are fascinating. Yeah, he lived with us for a while up in New Paltz oh, for a while. Yeah, he was I up in New Paltz, took a time upstate and everything like that. Yeah, there the, the, the were those other two guys. Uh, 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 Bob Schuler. You're right. Did you know Bob Schuler? Sure. Bob Schuler dropped those big uh, b big blocks of uh, uh, into the oceans of the yes, world. Yes, and, and, <laughs> with and, and Paul was on the boat. Paul, with he, Paul was on the boat. I think he steered the boat with him around <laughs> the world, dropping these big granite things in the bottom of the ocean in case everybody decides to blow the whole thing up, which is all the... That's the major concern. I saw Ted Turner on television the other day. He said that was his major concern. But anyway, I could never get, as I said to you on the telephone when you laughed, they couldn't get Hamish with him. Maurice was there, and he was welcoming, and Ma Marshall allowed I could sit in on his class. And I, would, I went to three years, but I could never, you became famous. I mean, you became close. Hamish well, is the term well, in Yiddish, Hamish. you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that was an I, honor I think, to I, I, I think partially, the the fact that I was a poet yes. was very important. Yeah, right. And the fact that I had read his uh, work and that I was familiar right. with his ideas, right. and, I, I, and I reminded him yeah. of what he was. See, the, the the thing that really got to me, the basic concept was the relationship of content and effect. Right. Because Marshall said very often with in media it is better to pay attention to the effect than the content right right and a the lot medium of is the message uh, our, a lot yeah. of our work yeah. Yeah. very early we did a piece in a th performance piece in san francisco is that usco or no yeah. no, no. pre-usco pre pre okay, yeah, yeah. Um, but I was already working <laughs> with the engineer that I've worked with forever, yeah. Michael Callahan, yeah. who is a brilliant young man, and yeah. a little younger than I, not yeah. that young yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. And he was with the San Francisco Tape Music Center. We did the destruction w in, in a uh -huh. theater in North Beach, uh -huh. uh, where it was 50 years ago this year. Oh, well, congratulations, uh, Michael. Where, where we invited people to bring things that they no longer w wanted to d deal with, yeah. and we would destroy them publicly, <laughs> or that they were fond of, yeah. you know. But uh, and kids and adults brought the most amazing bunch. We had like four destroyers on stage right. with with uh, <laughs> sledgehammers <laughs> and with uh, uh, you know. Fire yeah, and, uh, yeah. and blow torches and uh, and we destroyed things. In okay, front of them. again, I, I I reference the tyranny of time, and we have a little clip with me. Yes. Doing. So maybe we could play just for two or three yes. or four minutes. No, or well, however, we'll we'll yeah, no, but we're going to run out of time because okay. we only got fifty-eight minutes. We only got about ten minutes to go. So let's, really? Melanie, if you could, and we're talking about Marshall McLuhan, major figure, major intellectual. And uh, we got that little clip on a DVD, so if you can run that, and then we'll just give you an audio cue when we want to come to the end of it. But uh, Marshall McLuhan be for the people to view uh, what the man uh, appeared, and here we go now. Let's run this and so forth. Hey, it's good. Can you punch it's it out. It's really in it great condition. It doesn't overheat the best in the street. I'd give a little accent shots if I could. Actually, what are going to do? Crash? You're, you're, are you all taking pictures right now, are you? Well, the, this is an unexpected pleasure, Seth. And uh, so for the people at the Carpenter Center, uh, Barry Nevitt and Marshall McLuhan. Yeah, no, uh, Mr. Nevitt here really? is uh, my co-author on a book that has appeared so recently called Take Today, The Executive is Dropout, Harcourt Brace and Jovanovich. And we spent four years on this book, Barry, didn't we? Yes, Marshall, and we wrote m many more, I'm afraid, than one book. Uh, but the book that we retrieved from the uh, editors and the publishers was already rather large in your estimation, perhaps mine. It turned out to be uh, 
uh, an encyclopedia in a way of the uh, problems of today. Of is in management. In management and in all those things that managers are, are related decision to. Decision making. Decision making well, let's, in many fields. Let's simply comment on the title itself because I think if we talk about the title, Take Today, the executive has dropped out. I think we may be able to give a fairly good indication of what's there. I think the uh, beginning as we did with the executive's dropout uh, as a title that we thought would lead us into a fun book uh, uh, to explore all of the uh, comical sides of management, which led us into all the areas that we well, actually did discuss there, was perhaps uh, the beginning of well, our title. But I, I, before we ever touched the book, we were quite aware that there something new had happened in the world at large, that the ground against which all these operations took place was now a colossal information ground of electric services. And it was speed up. Basically, yes, the well, speed at which these information... Uh, basically, the speed of light. In. And that, yes, there was a speed of light, and that the question was then uh, relevant to a manager, could he cope with information which was traveling at the speed but, of light. Now, now that, let's come back to the title. Take today means <coughs> that at the speed of light, today includes here? all the past that ever was <laughs> and all the future. It's here. Okay, we didn't know we couldn't, uh, anyway, that's really good. That's the giant of the man. That was Neville that was talking and then you were uh, behind the camera. Barrington Neville yeah. uh, 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 and, and Marshall wrote a book together Which on management. Oh, on management. Yes. When, when would that have been, that date? Do you happen uh, to know? Maybe you don't know. Yes, I know exactly. Okay, 73. Good. 73. <laughs> okay. 73. That was just uh, a couple years after Woodstock and all that kind of stuff. But he was a major. Also, yeah, Black Mountain, we, we, we called, uh, for me, I liked, McClu I mean, I liked Bucky Fuller a great deal as a comprehensivist. You, well, he, uh, uh, and Bucky Fuller is uh, very much on time right now. You think uh, so, yeah. Well, yeah. there's a guy uh, who, who wrote a book. Uh, do you know Alastair Gordon's work at all? No, I don't. No, Alastair I wrote yeah. a book uh, called uh, Spaced Out uh, uh, by the, the uh, big Italian publishing firm. Uh, okay, I, I, okay yeah. I'm not, yeah. It's really a beautiful book about really? architecture and media, uh -huh. and there's a, a lot of pictures of our work in it. It's kind of a... Now you're book talking book. Esco? No, 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 yeah, I'm talking yeah, about Esco. Esco. Yeah, yeah, because that's yeah, up and going. Definitely, yeah. and, yeah. Uh, and he's now writing a book about Bucky. Oh, really? Yes. He's in the process. And yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, also, could you get? I wonder if I might be able to get in touch with him. With Alistair, sure. I'll, yeah. I'll put you in touch with Thank him. Thank you. And uh, he he l he's he doesn't live around here now. He used to live in New York, but he's. But I will put you in touch. You with know what him. I can do now? Yeah. I can do Skype. Yeah, you can that's do interviews nice. with people anywhere in the oh world. Yeah. That's really something. That's great. You can do that now. Yeah. And the other thing is uh, a big fifty-one foot dome of Bucky's uh -huh. was just uh, sent to Paris a little over a month or so ago. Really? Uh -huh. by, and by uh, Robert Rubin, the ex-secretary the ex uh, ex uh, uh, of the yeah, tre Treasury. Yeah, Treasury and Goldman who's, Sachs. Right? Who's, who's a, I don't know if he was Sachs, but yeah. he, he, he's a big art collector. I didn't know that. Uh -huh. and, and he was the, uh, we, we had a show at the Pompidou in, in Paris. Oh, really? Okay. Not too yeah. well, many years ago, called Traces of the Sacred, uh -huh. where we had a few pieces in a big show, yeah. beautiful show. Yeah. And uh, Robert Rubin was also the head of the Friends of the American Friends of the Pompidou, uh -huh. and he wanted to uh, give them one of the paintings that uh, was there called mm. Shiva, which was one of the six paintings in our tabernacle right. uh -huh. environment, but mm. it, 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 it's now on show up in the Hudson Valley. Uh -huh. It was it was part of also, it was part of Summer of Love, yeah. which was a show. 67 that was. Anyway. With the, well, no, I mean with the, the, the show which was at the Whitney. Oh, uh, and oh. Was, yes, and commemorating yeah. 67. Yeah, okay, right. Uh, that was about 2005, I think, okay, here. Yeah. 
Bucky, you mean? The one with Bucky? No. no. It okay. was a, a, a big show that started at the Tate in Liverpool. Okay. It then went to Frankfurt. And then came to and then to, the, to Vienna. Yeah. And then came to the Whitney. Okay, yeah, yeah right. They yeah. had a big show at the Whitney on Fuller also. For yes, they did. It was a major show. So what do you think? The, 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 the legacy, the implications, the meaning of that period, let's just say for want of a better term, 1969-70. Well, you you think the there was something, Bobby Dylan in his poetry said there was something blowing in the wind and he seemed to have a really good uh, reading of the, of the zeitgeist. I mean, what do you think? Was it a major well, moment of transformation that was being heralded? Well, but, but, or but Bob, Bob was in Woodstock at the time and we knew him fairly well. Who? Well, Dylan. Oh, Bob Dylan. Okay, yeah, right. You know, uh, he, he and the band. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a great period of music yeah. for him. Uh, but you know, he uh, he befriended a lot of people, and then he kind of abandoned that well, time. But the moment, uh, yes. the moment he captured it, the seemed poetry to be is wonderful. At the moment, and the moment was a moment of. Uh, well, uh, there was something really large taking place w w in Stark, terms of the zeitgeist, right? Woodstock, you know? yeah. the festival, typified that moment. Well, yeah, but and, there were there were larger things. It was a big party. And Richie big, Havens was... Richie Havens, God was, bless him, he's going to have his... He, will have finished, he wouldn't have finished his set yet because I think he'd still be playing 44 years ago yeah. on the stage. That you would help put struck with all your skills as carpentry. Well, no, With your, uh, no, no. your eminently no, capable no. crew. <laughs> well, <laughs> the carpenters who built that stage and the, and the lighting people who yeah. lit it and the, the, the sound people mm. who, I mean, it, it, it was, was an incomparable yeah. accomplishment. It was like a miraculous yes. thing. It, it was really, really was, yeah. And, uh, and they were experts in their field. But what, what do you think, like the Thunders, or you think of Joyce, or you think of the time, or you think uh, 200,000 years of human existence, and that there's a lot going on, and the destructive well, capability, I the just, incredible, uh, the liberating capability? Do you think we're at a time of qualitative I, transformation? I'll tell you. I just did a seminar yes, sir. in Karlsruhe, Germany, uh -huh. called McLuhan Plus. Okay, good. And it, the subject was prophetic technology. Thank you. I yeah. started with Isaiah uh -huh. and Erasmus of Rotterdam. Uh -huh. Most of it was about McLuhan's ideas. Okay. And then I ended with 21st century writers, in, and at the end, Douglas Rushkoff. Yeah, right. who, oh, Doug, yeah, yeah. Doug, yeah at the and he, well, he had just ri written uh, uh, present Chuck. Okay. You know, yeah. uh, uh, it wasn't Toffler. Yeah. And it was yeah. the Present Chuck right. about the digital dilemma. Uh -huh. And we have a digital dilemma. The, the digital dilemma is what? Is w we are captives of digital technology. Okay. We, we can't get away from it at all. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of co opts us. And uh, it, the texting. Uh, the teen yeah. teenage texting, yeah, yeah. Uh, everything Social is media. Uh, is a kind of a, a problematic technology. Is it, is and, it, it, uh, and and McLuhan was able to prophesize what happened f fifty years in advance. Mm -hmm. I don't find that there are many prophets of today mm -hmm. who understand what we're getting ourselves into. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mm -hmm. matter whether, whether we're talking about politics, mm -hmm. economics, art, yeah. but, or technology, but we need prophecy. Yeah. It's an essential part of human existence. It seems to be. It's been there mm -hmm. all along mm -hmm. yes. in, the in the prophetic tradition. Uh, they just had a conference. I don't know if you got wind of it. Uh, 2045, it was called. It was at the uh, Alice Tully Hall, all sponsored by a fellow, young fellow out of Russia, uh, Vladimir Itzkov. I did hear and it. And they had uh, Kurzweil and major yes. cyberneticists and roboticists and so forth. And they're talking about <coughs> uh, the quality, that we have a quantitative alteration in things. Things change over time. And uh, we got started the species about 200,000 years ago, 10,000 generations. 
I did a program with Isaac Asimov for once this year. This, oh, I this yeah. is the deciding, this is the defining, the defining generation. Yeah. Well, as a We may be beginning to come into a new relationship that is beyond quantitative political change, but we're getting almost towards something that's the beginning stages almost of like an, a speciation. That's going Absolutely. On. Well, that's what Kurzweil is talking about. Well, the sing is, the yeah. singularity. Yeah, the singularity but, but, is near, yeah. But, you know, Asimov yeah. w was a member Jeff. of our reality club. Which was he was really? Started, okay, yeah. A beautiful guy. John, beautiful John guy. John Brockman. Yeah. And uh, he was a fantastic guy. But, you know, the, the, the singularity is a concept. Well, it's that's when in machines exceed human intelligence yeah. collectively. And my friend and my collaborator, yeah. Ed Rosenfeld, yeah. is trying to write about other pos possibilities because the singularity is only one aspect of that kind of future thinking. Uh -huh. And it's not really prophecy because it's a kind of a... Uh, probe, like McLuhan might have called it a probe. Maybe, to, you know what I mean? But uh, it, it would be a finality, yeah. you know. And, and prophecy is not final; it's it it, it it's directional yeah. and onward thinking. Yeah. Well, the onwardness would be: what was it like to be a Homo habilis in per, a person before Homo sapien appeared? Evolution has a way of bringing the new out of the quantitative changes of the old, and we may be coming into a either stopping evolution with our weapon systems, which are very, very species lethal, or we have the ability to liberate the entire Homo sapiens species and the ecology that simply is only reminiscent of this right. time. And that's what Richie was singing about that when was he sang Richie. freedom. Right, he <laughs> sang freedom, uh, freedom yeah. for all, rather than just hearing the tubas or the the the, the, right. the the power class du jour that has been the history of mankind, we may be coming into a new relationship in the cosmos, and it might have been signaling in the date that that might be dated from. It's around the time of the Woodstock Festival when you put you and Wavy Gravy put together the need to have that po presented. A I think it's a question of hope. <laughs> yeah. Hope, <coughs> hope and faith <coughs> are... Our it's transcendent. Yes. Because there is a transcendent quality to uh And when, when, we, when we did our programs of We Are All One. Yeah, right. That's what, that's what we're, we were using media to say. That's right. And the and media is still, that's all extended consciousness. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And we were expanding so consciousness. So this may be the qualitative, a moment of quality, or the opening about a qualitative change that is like akin to speciation or some sort of a new order of things on a species level. One of the problems, I keep referring to it, the tyranny of time. We've run out of time, Gerd. Uh, uh, we have plenty of time. Well, we have plenty of time, but not for this program. <laughs> <laughs> it's been your pleasure to have to say a giant yeah, of the intellectual community knew them all and then some, uh, Gerd Stern, and it was such a pleasure to, so glad we could get you and talk about this and to celebrate uh, the, uh, the spirit of Woodstock, which might live in a longer context and particularly the intellectual people who have been able to bring some meaning to that. And he's one of those that's done that, and it's a question that's before us. Thank you for viewing. We'll be coming back again tomorrow. Thank you for such a very, 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 Ooh. very well-led life, Gerd well, Stern. I really appreciate it. I enormously. thank you for the opportunity to talk to you again. No, I thank you more than you okay. thank me. I thank right. you more. I'd like to do a Woody <laughs> Allen thing, you know, something like you know, that. No, I always use the number one and zero in Q for thank you. Okay. Thank oh, you very clever, much. clever, <laughs> clever. Thank you. Okay, we'll be coming back again tomorrow. Thanks again. Okay, we are, as they say in the biz, out.